We don't have everything actually welded in place. Hello, my name is Larry, and first off, let me thank you for stopping in and welcome you to the channel. Uh, this is going to be the third part of a small series of videos that we're putting together on a homemade sawmill build. Now, if you recollect or you watch any of my other videos, you're going to see that this was a video or a sawmill build that I started several years ago. Got the COVID, got knocked down pretty bad on it, and didn't think I was going to make it. This thing went in the mothball and never got finished. Well, we're back at it today. We're going to finish this build up in, in probably about five parts or five different videos. So stick around. Let me show you where we're at, and uh, this will be actually part three of the video. All right, I know we're going to have some road noise, and you probably see it in the back of the video, but there's nothing I can do about that. We've made it today to building the actual the bunks and the rack for the carriage. As you can see here, we're just pushing it forward. We don't have everything actually welded in place. Everything is spotted or tacked, uh, including the head itself. So, you know, it's uh, still got a lot of welding to do. But she rolls very easily. And uh, we're going to make adjustments before we do anything else. I'm not really sure how this video is going to turn out. I've never shot a video this time of the day with the sun to my back here. Uh, so I've tried to make adjustments on the camera to reflect the, the best possible image I can get for you. Uh, if uh, you've got any questions, or comments, leave them down in the section down below in the, in the description box in the comment section. But uh, the last thing I showed in the part two of this, this uh, series of videos was I was working on the sawmill head. Now I'm going to take this camera and walk around it and probably get you a better shot. We've got our boxes mounted, again tack welded, on the bottom. And if you see how we set these up, this is a little different than we normally do. We've got the, there's actually four inch wheels inside those boxes. And they're elevated a little bit higher than the 2x2 two two square tubing there, so it'll drop the carriage down. Now later in the video, I'm going to go ahead and put a piece of a slab of wood up there to show you why I did that. And there's a reason for this. After building four or five of these sawmills with this type of setup, without this, I pretty much gotten a pattern down of where I need to go and how I need to do each one of them. Now, if you were doing a different build where the pillar blocks were hanging down below and, and, and it was totally different on this end, everything would probably be a little bit different. Now, the tracks, or the bunks you want to call them, they're three by six, I believe. They're 33 inches wide, and I had to cut out enough on the sides right here to make sure that that box, let me see if I can pull it forward. We'll get by there, you see right there. Now I'm gonna grind those off and make them a lot prettier. Right now, like I said, if you look at each one of them, they're just tacked in place. We're gonna go through all the motions. When we get on the other side, that shadow's gonna take up the problem here, take us to a problem. It's a pretty simple build. The tracks are actually, I believe, 20 foot long. And we used two inch by three inch, three sixteenths angle iron for the tracks. And that stuff is pretty dad burn heavy. Like I stated earlier, you wanna, you're probably questioning why I put those boxes up a little higher than the 2x2 two two square tubing of the frame of the sawmill carriage. But once I put a piece of wood up there, you'll understand exactly why. All right, now I've got me a, a slab of wood up there that I've already cut from the other sawmill. But this is what I was uh, concerned about. Let me get this camera refocused.
It's kind of tough shooting this video with the sun being as bright as it is and at that angle, but as you can see, they have no wheels or no way to move this frame. This is what we need to pay attention to right here is blading this wood. And the difference between the top bunk and this, which is about two and three sixteenths inch from the bunk to this blade. Now you, you want to make sure that you're able to get it down, say, to at least a one inch slab. So you need this head to travel back down a little further. And if I were to put these wheels, which are in these boxes, underneath this two by two square tubing down here, and I'm hoping we're able to see that. I believe you can. Let me drop the camera a little bit. That way we'll make sure you see what we're talking about. All right, let me try to explain that again. Sorry for the delays there, guy. We put our bunks here. We put our boxes like this you see right here above this two by two square tubing so that the, the carriage the frame itself would be dropped down alongside the two by three square of the angle. Now if you see here, we got two and, oh, maybe three sixteenths from the bunk to the blade. And say for instance, you wanted to cut this, this piece of wood down a little deeper, which is three inches right now. Say you don't want to get it down to an inch and a half. I'm gonna back up the carriage. I'm gonna drop this down a little bit more and right now that is going to be about the max because if you look right here this blade is going to be hitting this box I don't think you'll be cutting a slab that is three quarters of an inch or less so we've got good clearance if we crank this up three more clicks that'll give me plenty room right there for the blade to ride above the wheel boxes. So I'll be able, to, in, in the long run, be able to cut this slab down to three quarters of an inch or an inch on the last cut. I won't have a super wide or super thick slab that I won't have any use for. So that is a reason why you want to try to drop drop that, uh, that head down as far as you can to get as much cut as you can out of that slab that you're going to have on the very bottom. One of the other things that I'm real concerned about, and I think I covered it in the other part of the second series, or second part of the video, is these cables. You've got to make sure that they're locked in place properly, and this one's going to get another clamp over here, and even, maybe even a spot weld. Now, the reason I say that's so important is that if one side drops more than the other side, your carriage, yeah, let me get the video back up there. Yeah, hopefully that's a little more focused. If you have one side lower than the other side, this blade is not going to be cut true. So it's very critical that these cables be perfectly level with the, the carriage head. Also, you want to make sure that the cable on each side with this lifting mechanism is winded up the same way. In other words, you don't want this cable over here winding to this side. You want them both, either inside or outside. You see these are both going outside. That when they curl up, they're going to pull up evenly. And they're going to be tight, wound tight. If one of them is spaced out more than the other one, the head is going to either pick up this way or that way. And it's not going to cut perfectly flush and level. So the cables are real important. You do see that these, these are aluminum. I've got some stainless steel ones. I'm gonna change those out. Uh, I'm waiting on those to come in now. But yeah, that, the cables are so important on this type of setup. Now I've actually used uh, different lifting mechanisms. I used the boat winch on one. I've used the Acme screw rods on this side and that side. Lasted for about seven, eight months. Man, I kept them oiled and cleaned, but I still had a lot of problems with them. Finally, you know, you travel a certain range, like here to here on the average log that you're gonna be cutting. And 
that section of Acme screw rod wore out very quickly and it started binding up. You can look at the, the actually the cutting, the spiral cut on the Acme screw rod and you can see that it was losing the flat surface of the screw itself and it was getting real knife edge so it started binding up in that certain section so I did away with that. Went to the boat winch, it was not precise, it wasn't accurate. Went back to this system on my last four bills and I really like it. If you're going with a heavier head you may want to go with a bigger cable and definitely make sure you go with the, the turnbuckles that are stainless steel. Again the tracks are about 20 feet long. Now I should be cutting a 14 foot log pretty easily with this and the maximum diameter I'm going to be able to cut will be around 31, 32 inches and that is actually pretty big for a sawmill of this caliber. Um, one and a quarter inch blade. I like to use the wood miser. I'm not endorsed by them nor do I get any kind of discount but I like the wood miser seven degree turbos. I've been running them for the last five years. They're easy to resharpen. They hold the edge for two or three more resharpens and you get a little more life out of them. I will be hooking up that uh, wheelchair motor and using it to lift the, uh, the head on the carriage. Not sure how that's going to work out right now. It's, I think it lifts a little bit too fast, so I'm going to have to find a way to slow that down. I've got one more blade guide roller to install on this side, and I will be making a new mount for that one on that side, which is the fixed side. I'm going to make something that's a little nicer, a little more rigid. And here is a shot of the blade guide rollers that I'll be using. You can buy those at tx-covers.com. T-X-D-A-S-H-C-O-V-E-R-S dot com under the industrial section. Bearing rides in this side and bearing rides in this side right here. Bearings come with the roller. The snug press fit. And this is a shot of the very first sawmill I ever built. We call this thing Godzilla. Now Godzilla has cut a many, a many a logs. She never got a paint job. And it just kept cutting, cutting, and then cutting. And they're probably gonna put this one up for sale once they get the other one built. Now this one will cut a log up to 50, 51 inches wide. Takes a 197 saw blade, which are a little bit more expensive than a 158. I started out with Godzilla, then I went and found this little sawmill at an auction, and this is old Harbor Freight. Cuts up to 20 inch, and that's about it. Nothing fancy, nothing special. Hope you can hear me with all the road noise. You see the cars flying by. And look at what we got here. A CNC table I found at a, at a garage sale. That's a five by five table. I'm gonna turn that to a CNC wood router. I got a video on one that I built several years ago. It was pretty cool. And then we also got us some logs over here. We got a black walnut on top there. And then we got a, a red oak in the back, I believe. And then we got us a, I believe that was a hickory on the bottom. So we're gonna put, put that on that old sawmill we're building right now. And uh, once we finish it, that's gonna be the first thing we're gonna cut, I believe. And now over here, we got us a big old cedar. Not sure how old it is. Hopefully we can get that on that little sawmill. If not, we'll have to crank up Godzilla and put it on there. Just some more added footage of a couple of logs I've got here to cut. Some of them ain't no good. Some of them just good for scrap pile. But we'll make something out of it, especially the cedar. Oh, the cat's got to put her two cents worth in. She's going to do her inspection, I guess. We had adopted that poor little old cat when she was a kitten about a year and a half ago. She'd come up on her doorsteps when it was about 13 degrees. She's pretty good at keeping them rats and mice out of the shop. Well, that kind of pretty much concludes the video. I know I rambled on a little bit too much there, but uh, the mind just ain't like it was before I got the COVID and before I turned 64. 
Make sure if this video has helped you in any form or fashion that you uh, hit the like and subscribe and that'll shoot you a message over there whenever I shoot part four of this video. And uh, we'll continue till we get it up and running and we saw the first log. So like, subscribe, thumbs up, comments, questions, and leave them down below. I'll put a link in the description where you can buy the blade guide rollers, the pulleys, the belts, the casters, the boxes, and some of the small parts you might need to, to build this sawmill. Thanks for watching.